coat it, or coat it with some oil, coat, coat it with some fat before we actually put it into um, whatever we're going to be cooking it on. You could fry it up the way that it is, however, you're going to find that if you don't do it with a little bit of a protective coating on it, it's going to dry out and it'll be too harsh and too aggressive for it. So your tenderloin can very quickly become a larger piece of meat, which will cook fast, and it fills up a plate quite nicely versus having the little pieces and such. Time to sip some coffee because I'm getting dry. Any questions on the pig this far? Do you use, uh, last year you showed us a new tool, a tool that you, uh, the number of knives used for tenderizing? Yeah, there it is. You can use it on pork, on a tough piece of pork? You, you can use that on anything that's tough. And it'll definitely work through it and such. Um, when we're doing it on the tenderloin, it will have a good impact on it. It is going to soften it up. And you'll see how, if you're cautious with it, it will also give the same effect as hitting it with a mallet will as it's starting to spread it out and make it a larger piece of meat but it is also ready pre-chewed and if I'm a little bit rough on it it's going to start to come apart on me. So I could do that and it spreads out quite a bit. I forced it in those two areas so I can see the light through it, maybe you can. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can definitely work through it and tenderize it a bit. It's a good thing if you're trying to get flavor into your meat, if you're going to be marinating it in such, it'll definitely work well with it. But yeah, you can definitely use the jacquard on that. Um, not too many spots though in pork where I would use something like this, uh, just because it is relatively tender to begin with. Um, <laughs> we regularly go to pig roast. I've never been to a cow roast. And that's got to do with the way the muscle structure of the pig is the fat content, and that you can actually roast the animal whole, and it doesn't matter what you do, you tear it apart, it's going to be quite tender, juicy, and flavorful. You can work with uh, whole pigs, Autonomy is a great place to get them from, it's where I get mine from, I don't get any money from sending you there, I wish I did, but um, I do get my pigs from them. Um, there's a lot of discussion about different pigs and whatnot, some people say, well if you get a smaller pig, it's much more tender and the skin browns up more than the larger pigs. Pig is pig. Cows will market veal from, but you don't hear about eating piglets or anything like that being a finer cut. They're, they're gonna be the same type of meat all the way through. It just depends on how long you wanna cook it and how many people you gotta cook for. If I was gonna feed 200 people, I'd prefer to do three small pigs versus one big, huge, big show pig. So I can do the smaller pigs in three to four hours, where it can take up to eight hours on those larger hogs. <laughs> if you're gonna be doing a large one, that's fine. If you're hiring a company, they're like, oh, you're gonna need a 200 pound pig? That means you're paying somewhere to sit, someone to sit and watch your pig cook for eight hours. Smaller one, three to four hours, it's done quite quickly. One of the things that happens if you're gonna be roasting whole pigs, <laughs> anyone done a whole pig? Any situations that come up when you were dealing with it that you learned from real quick? Don't cook yourself. That's a good one. Which does happen because people were you on a spit? Yeah. Homemade? Did you make the spit yourself? Okay. What's that? They can fall off, and that's what happens when you first get it on there. You get it tied. I usually use a wooden spit. I'll cut down a tree for it. I'll use a maple or a cherry or whatever. Make my spit from that, and then I run it about 10 feet off the other side of my fire pit. My fire pit that I cook in is 10 feet. It's big, it's a very large pit, and it allows me to run a good hot charcoal fire, but also add regular wood or natural wood to it as well. And if I'm finding that it's moving too fast, I can use a shovel and pull the coals back, or if I need to speed it up, I can take the coals in. If you cook a pig too fast, the skin's gonna crack. You don't want that to happen. You want the skin to stay intact so that all that juice and fat stays inside instead of dripping in the fire because the fat will flare up and it's going to overcook the pig or burn the pig in some spots. <laughs> you have to make sure that the pig is securely attached to the spit. They will fall off the spit into the fire. And you'll see people get really excited and hyper and try to rescue a fire-roasted pig out of the fire. Some people's immediate reaction. 
So, obviously you're gonna have the body cavity and such. Just take a look in the body cavity. It's not a hard thing to do. It's very easy to see inside them. And what ends up happening though is if it's the body cavity here, we take all these parts out of the animal, we end up with actually very thin flesh here. So we actually need to stuff something in there when you're gonna be roasting the pig so that it balances out the cooking time. Sort of like when we're doing a turkey and such. <laughs> I usually fill mine full of um, grape vines, which you can get obviously from the backyard, uh, lemongrass, whole cloves of garlic, maybe some whole onions and such, and then I'll use butcher twine and I will sew it up very, very tightly, just like you would if you had a cut on your finger. I don't know if you sew yourselves up, but it's pretty much the same sort of thing that you're gonna be doing. It'd be like darning socks, there we go. <laughs> um, but flesh is flesh, and when you're sewing flesh, it all reacts the same way. You wanna make sure that belly cavity is good and tight, but before you would do that, you would, the first thing you do is start to line that belly cavity with some of your stuffing. Then you put the spit through, obviously coming up between the legs. Uh, the legs can be bound to be able to hold it to the spit, have it coming out the snout, and then you're gonna put the rest of your stuffing in, and then you'll sew up the belly cavity. <laughs> it will still be very loose though on the, um, on the spit, and you have to make sure that it is securely tied to it. If you overextend the front legs and the back legs and bind them to the spit, that's going to help. But what happens is once it starts cooking, meat pulls off the bone. And the spine's gonna relax, the spine might even snap if it's not, excuse me, securely tied. What you'll find is, some people will wrap it up in chicken wire and such, and that can work quite well. I've had good success without having to do that, but having a few people take and hyperextend the animal as hard as you can, and almost force the joints into an awkward situation, and then tie them off, they've always had great success. You just have to watch it when you're, when you're slowly uh, putting it on the rotisserie, when it's coming around, they tend to be a little bit top heavy on one side. You'll tell very quickly if the pig's gonna shift off the spit or not, and if those bones are starting to relax too much, you'll know well in advance whether you're gonna run into a problem or not. <laughs> so if you do run into the problem? What I've learned is that I usually carry a, a drill with me, a cordless drill, and when no one's looking, I put two good screws through the snout, and that helps into keep- the wood right through the snout, right down in the wood, and that locks the head in place so it's not gonna shift. Um, I don't do it back in the other edible parts though. Um, and I find that that helps keep the spine quite well in place. <laughs> if you're noticing that it's starting to slip, you're gonna have to take it off and make some adjustments. First couple times if you want to, you might wanna try the dug pit method. Dig a pit, get a bunch of coal going in it, put some dirt in, put the pig in, let it go. Uh, we do both methods. I prefer it when it's on the spit. Um, my wife's family, she was born and raised in Canada, but her, her parents come from the Philippines and such. And we do regular dug pit pigs, or we'll do the whole roasted pigs as well. Well, the pit pig sometimes is a fat <laughs> You don't build up enough. That's right. You can run into some situations there. Um, and if you're, if you're not cautious with it, the fat can put out your fire. The fact if you burn fat, um, it'll add a different flavor to your food as well. Mm -hmm. So you have to be cautious with it. Um, for basting the pig and whatnot when it's cooking, I usually just use soy sauce, brown sugar, and some water or a beer, mix it in a can. But like you saw how big this loin was, if we were roasting that whole pig, it would be that long, it's gonna be that big around. So you're not gonna be out there with a little pastry brush. I go to Min's uh, grocery store and I get the frozen banana leaves. And I get a big long stick and I'll take the banana leaf and I'll tie it because banana leaves come six, eight, ten feet long. I'll tie them up into a bunch at the bottom and that's my basting brush. And I can stand 20 feet away with a beer or whatever I'm doing and just brush it regularly using that as my brush. And the banana leaf works very well for that. They cost a buck to throw. Throw it in the fire when you're done. Works very well. In Hawaii, they bury them right then. What's that? And the pit in Hawaii, they bury them. Exactly, yep. And with the Philippines, that's uh, they're also in the Pacific as well. And a lot of those islands uh, use a lot of the same methods also for cooking and such. Um, Adobe ovens work well for them as also. If you have a backyard oven that you want to cook in, it does a wonderful job on pigs as it does with goats. If you're going to uh, roast whole animals, lamb, goats, and pigs are perfect in the adobe ovens. Not as much possibly to lose if it falls in the fire and it is a much more controlled, much more sustained heating environment when you're going to be working with it. So if, you, if you're fortunate enough to have one or want to build one, there's wicked uh, uh, concepts for it online. Very easy to do. Uh, obviously, if you're going to be using rocks, don't use river rocks. Uh, you can use terracotta. There's a number of different things that you can use for it. Uh, Did you say don't use river rocks? Some of them will explode. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, if you, I don't know if you've been around a campfire and all of a sudden one of the rocks pops, it's pretty scary and intense. And usually if you've got rocks that have actually been submerged in water for a long time, they will still have moisture inside them and they will have a tendency to want to pop. Yeah, happens quite a bit, unfortunately. Where can you buy a decent injector? Decent injector. Well, aisle one inside. <laughs> and what's your concerns with the injector? Well, for shoulders and whatnot. For shoulders and porks and whatnot, um, there are different varieties inside. Uh, I've had good success with them. Um, has anything gone wrong with